Hi, good evening all and thank you so much for joining today's exclusive webinar. My name is Ashish Asthana and along with me we have our retail research head Mr. Deepak Jisani sir with us, right? So today's webinar, this session we are doing exclusively on why it is important to sell the stock on time, right? We all know what to buy. Mostly we get to know what to buy, but it is very, very important when to exit. The paper profits which are there, you need to be actually converted into, you know, realized profits. And that can only happen when you exit on time. So today we are going to discuss this only from our research head that what is the thought process that you should put behind you take that informed decision so that the paper profits can be actually booked. So over to you. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, this is a slightly interesting topic in the sense that we have done many webinars as to what to buy, when to buy, etc, etc. But when, why to sell? I think this may be one of the uh, rarest uh, such topics uh, for a webinar by us or by any other broker for that matter. Uh, so now uh, uh, let's get on to the PPT, uh, which will be shown parallelly uh, with uh, me in the background. So now uh, <clears throat> most of us has, have experienced that uh, in good times uh, our portfolio value keeps rising. Uh, we, we feel happy. We look at the portfolio once or twice a day uh, and uh, be uh, joyful about the fact that our portfolio value keeps increasing. Uh, but when the uh, things turn downwards, uh, then uh, probably uh, uh, we uh, are a bit uh, remorseful in the sense that why we did not uh, take profits in time. And uh, if that trend continues on the downside and uh, we are sort of uh, st stuck for action, uh, then our profits uh, disappear and we uh, go into losses. Uh, number of times this uh, situation has occurred with most of us. Uh, so here we, we will discuss in this webinar as to why uh, this is a human uh, tendency to do this and how can we avoid this and how can we come out better. Uh, we cannot sort of uh, book profits at the tops or the highs, but at least uh, uh, how to make the best out of the situation is what we uh, tend to uh, come out at the end of this webinar. So now, uh, are we putting sufficient efforts uh, for effective selling? Uh, basically, whatever be the reason for selling, uh, we must use as much prudence and discipline uh, as in buying uh, for even selling. The ultimate success or failure for a trade will depend on how much profit comes into your bank at the end of the day. So now uh, we have observed that uh, investors take a lot of time and effort in shortlisting good stocks, uh, uh, timing the entry also quite well, uh, and then holding on to the stocks. But for selling, they don't put in enough efforts. Uh, so that is where uh, the, the whole problem lies. The, the, uh, the time and efforts put in buying is much more than the time and effort put uh, in the sell, sell side of the trade. Now, investment gurus have all, all, all along uh, told us that buy and hold is a good strategy, is a strategy will, which will help us build wealth over time. Uh, it will give you compounding benefits and your wealth will, uh, will grow steadily over time. Now, a buy and hold investor typically wants the compounding effect to work for him uh, as well as take uh, the benefit of the tax, uh, the lower tax that is applicable for a longer period holding. Uh, even modest rates of return, if, even if you earn 12, 12 13, 14 percent return, if you compound that over time, then it, it grows into a substantial, amount, a substantial amount of wealth. But at the same time, the buy and hold investor also wants him to be alerted uh, as to when the whole thesis of buy and hold is failing. So now uh, let us look at the reality. Uh, the theory of buy and hold we discussed, the reality of buy and hold, uh, this is a chart. 10 year CAGR Sensex performance. So now if you have uh, exist, exited in 2002, year 2002, uh, you would have made negative returns. So this is for Sensex, this is not for individual stocks. So Sensex, typically the returns should be more stable, more steady than the broader market. So now uh, even if somebody had bought and held it over from 1992 to 2002, at the end of 10 years, you would have got negative compounded returns. So 
again uh, if he uh, somebody wants to exit sometime between 2017 to 2018 he would have earned close to 5% return compounded over 10 years so this is not we what we want uh, while investing in equities equities we want returns which are better than bank fixed deposit which are better than fixed income instruments because the level of risk in equities is also much higher so now uh, buy and hold uh, works but you you will have to time your entry and exit more important is exit now for example in the same chart if you look at uh, if you had exited at say 2013 in 2013 you would have uh, realized the returns of 20 percent plus compounded so that is important uh, your entry and exit timing is more important uh, to lock in good profits selection of stocks of course is important but uh, taking profits at regular intervals also helps in booking those profits now the next uh, slide uh, again we'll continue with the buy and hold reality uh, the left left hand chart shows that over a 90 year period in the united states of in, uh, america 96 percent of the stocks could not beat the risk-free one month t bill return so there the t bill return is sub two percent so or even sub one percent i think one month t bill return would be sub one percent below one percent so 96 percent of these stocks over a 90 year period did not earn more than one percent compounded over this 90 year period only four percent of these stocks generated all of the nearly 32 trillion of wealth created by stocks so this gives an idea as to buy and hold works but only for those four percent stocks for the 96 percent stocks you would have seen a lot of volatility up and down movement and in case you did not exit in that up movement you would uh, sort of be staring at a one percent return over 90 years which i am sure nobody wants to uh, achieve or get the chart on the right hand side uh, is a SIP, uh, chart about sip returns 10 year cag sip cagr of sensex now here again if somebody had exited uh, sometime in 2003 sip return this is not a lump sum return the earlier chart was a lump sum this is sip return then you would have ended with a negative return of four percent Typically, SIP returns, SIP investment is more safer and steadier than uh, lump sum uh, investments. But even in SIP, 10 year uh, SIP return, if you had exited in say 2002 or 2003, you would have ended up with a minus 4% return. This is for Sensex stocks again. We are not talking about individual stocks. So basically, buy and hold uh, strategy will work only if the stock selection is right. You need to have the foresight to choose the right stock, those four or five out of hundred stocks, and be patient to hold them over the long term. So even if you are lucky to have chosen those four or five stocks, uh, you would be uh, most of us would have exited soon or would not have held for long because typically profits we tend to book in uh, in short uh, returns and losses we let them run so uh, you have to be doubly uh, lucky get your four or five right stocks and hold them over the long term only then you will be able to build wealth now bulk of equity returns in india since 1990 have happened in two stretches 1990 to 1992 was a boom period and the second period was 2003 to 2008 so if you remove the returns of these two periods from a longer per, uh, period return then the uh, average return would be much lower so what we are trying to say is uh, that you will have to get uh, take advantage of those small periods of bullishness bull periods if you don't exit in those bull periods and continue to hold it beyond the top then your returns will keep getting down lower and lower there are five and ten year periods in india where the uh, equity returns have barely uh, beaten the savings bank interest equity returns come in clusters and this clusters both on the upside and the downside are very difficult to predict stock markets again work in cycles of 7 to 10 years 
when the uh, cycle goes adverse or turns down most investors become irrational and they oversell fundamentally good companies out of panic or fear at prices which are much below their recent peak now this is a, a mistake that most of us uh, uh, do we have seen our stock price rising from 10 rupees to say 100 rupees in a bull period we did not sell uh, till 100 rupees now when the stock price starts to fall for the, till about 60 70 60 rupees we are still okay if this is just a temporary uh, fall when it goes below to 40 and 30 at that point we start to uh, worry and then we sell them off to so, uh, lock in at least 20 or 30 rupees of profits now this is what we have to try and avoid now how we can avoid that we will try we'll come to that uh, later now next uh, again we continue with the buy and hold uh, strategy basically uh, there are swift declines in the market so if you are not able to uh, exit before those declines then buy and hold strategy is not going to work for you except uh, in those one percent of the stocks which after that decline rise much faster than the decline but those are just one out of 100 or one out one out of 500 stocks so if you're lucky that you have that one stock then you will be uh, indifferent to that kind of fall but if you have those balanced stocks then the falls will be quite sharp and uh, your profits will be blown away and uh, at times you will go into losses also markets have been polarized of late uh, you are all aware that very few stocks are uh, leading the markets or indices up uh, so main action is concentrated on top 30 50 or 100 stocks while the rest of the uh, market keeps draining the investors wealth now the chart at the bottom uh, is the comparison of how the market cap total bsc has compared with uh, the market cap of bsc sensex the blue line is the uh, bsc total whereas the red line is the bsc sensex so from january 2000 we have started we started the study uh, the sensex market cap has risen faster till about january 2008 then again it fell and then it again rise is rose so this is not the absolute market cap this is the rate of growth so we have started both at 100 so don't uh, mix the two the rate of growth of market cap of sensex is much faster than the rate of growth of bsc total so what it shows is that select stocks grow much faster uh, than the overall market the overall market does not perform the other stocks keep falling keep making new lows but because the media highlights only the indices uh, you are in a sense uh, you feel that oh okay uh, everything is fine with the world uh, although the, my portfolio value does not uh, keep uh, in pace with the uh, sensex rise or even deteriorates or it falls so this is uh, uh, this is the reason why we uh, uh, think that selling your stocks uh, or evaluating to sell your stocks is uh, more important uh, at times than even buying the right stocks now uh, the next slide again uh, a lot of us make the mistake of chasing multi baggers and enter at the fag end of the rally uh, we don't do due diligence whether the stock is the right stock the what how the industry is growing well how are the promoters uh, what is the revenue visibility over the time whether the margins are going to expand or not and in their eagerness to get in uh, they end up buying stocks with questionable management or high price stocks uh, with little uh, margin of safety also when uh, the their stock starts to underperform they show signs of lethargy it's basically uh, tired uh, indifferent not looking at the portfolio value or inaction so even if i know my portfolio value is not doing well i will not take any action uh, because i hope that the underperformance in my stocks is temporary and i will only look at the positive news pertaining to my stocks i will not look at the negative uh, news or even if i look at the negative news i will not tend to believe them because i hope that my stock does well irrespective of whatever is 
the news or development in the stock so whenever the stocks fall steeply uh, then the investors become more indifferent now they say ki now theek hai na itna gir chuke hai to bhi aur ki we even if i sell now what will i realize i will not realize any large sum of money and if i sell it will hurt my ego in the sense that i have booked the loss now that is something which most of us don't want to do a uh, booking loss is an anathema uh, for most of us now the two charts at the bottom uh, the the one on the left is the arcom and the one on the right is uh, jet airways so here uh, if uh, the investor had uh, reviewed the stock at intervals then a little bit of technical analysis or charting or taken some advice from a chartist then there were a number of occasions where he could have exited arcom for example there are two uh, horizontal lines uh, he could have exited somewhere be uh, between 80 to 90 rupees that was the first chance uh, of exit but even if he had not exited then then he could have exited when the bottoms or the supports were bro broken around 50 rupees currently the stock is quoting below 3 rupees so what kind of well destruction happens typically when the stock price keeps falling then uh, the investors go, goes into no action mode yeah okay, now i don't want to sell at some point it will rise let me keep it let me hold it forever and then we'll see the stock uh, the chart on the right side is jet airways again uh, at one time it was a blue chip arcom was also a blue chip at one point of time uh so people were uh, sort of falling over each other to buy that stock but now uh, after certain developments in the company some certain regulatory changes and the competitive changes uh, this is what has happened to stock price so uh, on the right side again jet airways uh, so something similar uh, the investor had chances twice on the uh, at the horizontal lines drawn but if he has not taken that then uh, the stock price keeps uh, kept falling and it is now quoting at such low levels so not exiting in time leads to huge erosion in wealth right now why investors should be selling we come to that uh, uh, topic investors can sell because they want to take profit now that is the first fundamental reason why do we buy stocks after all we buy stocks to make money to uh, earn profits so we have to take profits so if you want to take profits we have to sell now the closer the stock share stock price is to the stock's value the intrinsic value uh, the greater the risk of holding the stock going forward so now if you feel that a particular stock is worth 100 rupees it is currently quoting at 60 rupees let me buy it now when it, when it goes to say 90 or 95 holding it beyond say uh, that price or beyond 100 can be risky because once that intrinsic value has been achieved by the stock and if you don't sell then uh, there could be an issue because then there could be others who are thinking similarly and they may come to sell and they may sort of beat you in selling and by, by the supply could pull the uh, prices down so one approach is to start taking profits when the stock moves from very cheap uh, to mildly cheap sell more again if it trades around fair value so here basically when it moves from 60 to 80 you sell a little bit from 80 to 95 at 95 you again sell some more when it comes to closer to the fair value and when it uh, hits over price now if it goes to say 110 you exit whole the entire thing you have exit basically you have to sell at your time you should not be forced to sell uh, under adverse circumstances where uh either for your own need you have to sell uh, regardless of the price or because the share price has tanked because of some adverse development in the company and you are realizing lesser money so you should not go into that situation you should be selling in a uh, position of strength so that is the first uh, thing why people should be selling the second reason could be to cut losses now basically if you have bought a share at, at 60 rupees and it falls to say 50 rupees then uh, hanging on to that stock without realizing why it is falling is another is is of concern so it, it dilutes your the quality of your portfolio and the long term performance so if 
you think uh, the, the move to 50 is purely temporary without getting emotional about it then you can come continue to hold it but even then you will have to keep some mental stop loss if despite this if it moves below say 45 i am going to sell it out because my perception of temporary may not match with that of the market so at, when it hits 45 and it goes below 45 i will sell it irrespective of uh, whatever is the development in the company so if you do that then you uh, book your losses it, uh, it hurts your ego for some time but then it protects your balance capital which you can use for earning in other stocks now losing sleep over investments if you uh, are losing sleep over investments uh, basically why are you buying stock you are buying uh, shares to make money to make your life more happier uh, but if you are losing sleep over an investment then it is not good to continue to hold that stock if, if your stock uh, displays the kind of volatility which your age or your risk profile does not permit you to continue to hold then you should get out of the stock so basically if a particular stock goes up 20 percent one day and goes down 20 percent the other day then you should uh, if you are say 50 plus or 60 plus then you should not be owning that stock then portfolio rebalancing now uh, if you are holding say uh, 10 uh, 10 different uh, stocks uh, you have you are sizing your holdings basically if you have 10 lakh rupees you have 1 lakh worth of 10 shares now one of those shares uh, rises sharply 1 lakh becomes say 2 and a half lakhs so then the weight of that share in the overall portfolio grows so basically sectoral weight stock weight everything goes up so that can be risky going forward of course that two and a half can go up to three and three and a half also we don't know that but as a prudent or a sensible thing would be to bring down the weight from two and a half lakhs to one and a half lakhs so one lakh you can sort of uh, you can be okay with up to 1.5 1.7 lakhs worth in a portfolio but whatever is above that you you should book your profits either stay in cash or look out for some more stocks to buy next now these are the reasons why you should be selling but now why do you don't not sell why the, why investors don't sell so basically there is an endowment effect what is endowment effect endowment effect uh, describes the circumstance in which an individual values something which they already own more than something which they do, uh, do not yet own so basically whatever stocks i own uh, I, I i value them more than the others then uh, because of the endowment effect I, I have a tendency to hold on to the stocks even if the stocks are no longer fit with my investment goals or they are losing stocks so if i am holding a particular stock for say five seven years it has initially performed very well but now it is not performing well but i, I am in love with the stock basically it means that i am in love with the stock irrespective of what happens to the company what happens to the stock performance, I will keep holding to the stock. So that is an endowment stock. So I like that stock much more than the other stocks which are available cheaply or which are more attractive to buy. Confirmation bias. Now confirmation bias means that a psychological phenomena that explains why people tend to seek out information that confirms their existing opinions and overlook or ignore information that refutes their beliefs. So we discussed earlier that I will look out only for positive news about my stocks negative news i will neither, i will either not look at them or, or even if i look at them i will not believe them so that is a confirmation bias loss aversion basically uh, the pain out of loss is two times the joy of gain that is uh, psychologically proved so to avoid the feeling of pain of loss uh, we sell away our winners very early and hold on to our losing stocks so even if i uh, 60 rupees stock I, I will sell out at 70 rupees for example but if that falls to 45 rupees even then i will keep holding so 10 rupees profit i will uh, book immediately but if it goes down to 15 rupees lower than my entry i will still keep holding to it so taking loss is part of the trading basically if you cannot you will not be around to uh, for the big gains because you will be on the sidelines guarding your capital against that potential loss so either you will be saddled with the stocks non-performing stocks or you will be very uh, fearful of entering into the 
and buying new stocks. So either way, you will lose out on the opportunities. Then there is fear of missing out. Now, fear of missing out works out both ways. Uh, one is that uh, when, a, when a stock keeps rising, uh, people jump in. As we discussed earlier, most people buy at the near the peak of the bull markets. So people jump in. People hear a lot about a particular stock. This stock is going to do well. Uh, my, my neighbor, my relative, my friend, my colleague has bought it. So I am left out. They have all made good money. So I will also buy in. So that is the fear of missing out on the buying side. There is also the fear of missing out on the sell side. Now, if uh, I, I think I should book a profit on this stock, but what happens if it goes up from here? So that is fear of missing out on the future gains. So that is also a reason why people don't sell stocks. Now, what forces an investor to consider selling? Uh, say, for example, uh, your stock falls 5%. You think that the market is... Uh, short term, it's fickle, it keeps uh, sort of vacillating, so nothing to worry. If it is down 10%, you start to worry a little. But if it, uh, and you feel that it will rebound shortly, but uh, if it falls 20 or 50%, then panic sets in. What is happening? There's something wrong. Either my stock is wrong, market is wrong, or uh, something uh, adverse has happened to the industry. So successful uh, investing hinges on knowing when to sell as it does on knowing when to buy and what to buy. So how can you know when to hold on and when to cut your losses? So to get a reliable answer, you will have to uh, look at these three questions. Now have, have the company circumstances in which you have bought the stock changed? So you would have bought a particular stock at a particular time under uh, particular circumstance and assumptions. Now, have they changed drastically? So you, in that case, you should seriously consider selling. Was the stock anyway overhyped in the first place and your buy as a hot tip has backfired? So again, uh, because you bought at the near the top and the call, did not check the quality or did not do due diligence and now it has started to fall. So should you think it was overhyped and it was your mistake? Should you accept your mistake and get out in time? Or has the stock become too volatile for your age or for your risk profile? So again, we discuss the same thing. If the stock price moves up 20% or th uh, percent and moves down 20% the next day, then if you are, say, 50 plus, you should consider whether you should continue to hold such shares or not. Now, overall deterioration in the company's fundamentals have happened very gradually. Uh, growth does not materialize. The expected growth does not materialize. There is unexplained pressure on margins. There is more discussion on competitive pressures or gradual increases in capital expenditure. Each dis disappoint is, disappointment is small in isolation. Management provides a good explanation for each and dismisses them as non-recurring. Companies rarely deteriorate from great to good in a single quarter or a year, but rather decline gradually over a few years or more. There is seldom a single defining moment when it becomes obvious that a business has gone from high quality to low. So it happens very gradually. The company will give you a num number of chances to evaluate and to get out in time. Many investing mistakes can be traced to overlooking the downside risk of debt or its sources. Uh, in the recent past, we have seen all the leverage companies falling very sharply in terms of equity values. So that is a very big thing you have to look in when you enter a stock. Is the company carrying a lot of debt, is it over leveraged, does it keep borrowing more and more every year, then that is a red signal. The illusion of predictability also seems to recur in companies that are orga organizationally complex, such as industrial conglomerates or diversified financial institutions. So if you have too many uh, segments, too many businesses, then the predictability of the growth in revenue and margins becomes more and more difficult. So in such a circumstance, you have to be a little careful in continuing with your investments. Now, there are other warning signs which will force you as an investors to consider selling. Now, for example, if there is some problem which has arisen in the company or the industry, in general, the earnings for the industry are falling. Uh, now, for example, telecom companies, up to two, uh, two years back when RGO was launched, two or three years back, since then they... Uh, the industry structure has changed. 
so it was quite glaring and apparent that the incumbents will not do well for the next few quarters so that situation has continued till now the company has cut its dividend now that is the first signal of not good times the company is about to embark on a large ill thought acquisition or diversification key managers of company start to sell big amount of stock the company becomes too big to grow at a reasonable pace now if the company is uh, big, uh, is has a uh, turnover of some 20000 50000 crores it has grown over 20 years or 30 years from growing from here at the same pace becomes more and more difficult as your base grows bigger of course it may be a very stable and a steady company so then you will have to bring down your expectation of returns from such companies there are downward revision to earning expectations there are negative earning surprises on consecutive quarters and a competitive position of the company is not as strong as you thought initially market potential is not as big as you thought initially or management is not treating minority shareholders fairly there are adverse regulations which have come into force after you entered the stock and the company is failing on corporate governance standards or making suboptimal capital allocation decisions consistently so these are some other warning signs which will force you to consider whether you should be exiting your position now the closing remarks the best uh, mitigation against falling stock price is sufficient diversification so basically uh, that is a well known fact you should not have all eggs in one basket so rather than having three or five stocks in your portfolio have eight to ten stocks at least or even up to 12 to 15 stocks so that uh, even if a few of them don't perform well or go into losses the others can compensate for that now this uh, selling concept may not apply in uh, stocks which wide uh, moats moats is our unique advantages now for example in india fmcg companies or retail companies are some such companies so the companies which have strong sustainable competitive advantages are likely to create value over time so there you need not be in a hurry to exit there may, they may be more uh, temporarily overpriced but uh, you if you are a smart trader you may exit in time and to re-enter at a lower time they may undergo price or time correction now for example the chart below shows uh, hindustan unilever overall this uh, price has moved up and up and away but there are there are periods in between this is a monthly chart so for months together the stock price has not gone anywhere so you it will tire you out so you should be prepared for that or you should be uh, you should try to time uh, exit and re-enter at lower levels or after a certain period of time now selling can mean lock, uh, locking profit or potentially missing out on the further gains selling can also mean locking in a loss along with the regret of doing so the asset sold may outperform a benchmark index but the sale may still be optimal depending on where the proceeds are redeployed so in case you have sold a particular underperforming stock and redeployed in some other stock and that stock does much better than the sold stock then you should be happy how to come out of all this basically uh, one should not be too stubborn not to be to be too greedy and not be afraid to take small losses take part of your holdings off the table now if you have a good profit in a stock if your 60 rupees stock has moved up to say 120 so sell half the stock if you are not uh, comfortable selling more then sell half the stock make your other half free and then let it run uh, review the other half uh, for higher profits or higher gains this seems to be a reasonable approach and will seem to navigate that treacherous corridor between fear and greed and between risk and reward so this is one way you can sort of avoid uh, the uh, trappings of not selling at all so uh, this finishes our small talk on the uh, importance of selling now uh, if we have some questions regarding this topic maybe we'll take some of them
So the question has come from Anand R. Buying a stock for 50 rupees and then selling it for 200 rupees. Won't I lose the advantage of buying it at 50 rupees even though I make 150 rupees by selling? So now why do we buy stocks after all? We buy stocks to make money. So now if your stock has risen so fast and if it is giving you so much of profits, then why are you worried about losing the advantage of an early entry? Or at least sell half or one third because it has risen uh, one third or one fourth and make the other uh, portion free because by doing that if the stock reverses direction and goes back to 50 you will not be remorseful you will have at least have the uh, comfort of taking out the profits and making your holdings free ideally you should uh, sell more than one fourth you should sell some profits also you should be booking so that that profit can be redeployed in some other stock but even if you don't want to do that sell at least one fourth the advantage of early uh, entry uh, is good to be happy about but unless you convert that into money it has very little sense What should be the thumb rule for booking profit or putting stop loss? Ujwal Sahasrabuddhi has asked. Now, to each one it depends individually. Now, whether it is a trading position or an investment position. Uh, stop losses will depend on that. Your So risk reward will entirely depend on that. If it is a trading position, then ideally your upside should be uh, say between 7 to 12% and your stop losses should be between 3 to 5 percent if it is an investment position then probably uh, and your holding period is minimum one year then you can look for about between 18 to 25 percent upside and a stop loss of about uh, 8 to 13 percent so that is a ballpark number but if you if you want to take more risk then you can have a higher target and a lower stop loss also audio going blank yeah usha r uh, has asked that whatever you have said does it apply to mutual funds also now mutual funds it also applies but not to such a great extent because mutual funds themselves churn their portfolio so they will do that work on your behalf they will exit non performing stocks and they will enter performing stocks but at the same time uh, at times of large crashes there is a deep erosion in the NAVs. so the the uh, the principle of uh, taking half your uh, uh, selling out half your holdings and be making it free all those principles also apply here uh, the only thing is key for uh, small uh, fluctuations you need not get too worried but wherever you have seen a very uh, uh, significant build up over time and over value at that point, you should be taking profits at least partly, if not fully. I think uh, that's all. Uh, thank you. I, uh, I hope you uh, this talk was of some value to you. Uh, have a great evening. Thank you.